when that happened in Iran, mm. um, and I, I, I'm wary that I've spoken about this a couple of times today, but I know that people listening will hear this, uh, mm. you know, several episodes, different weeks and things. But but my, my understanding is a similar thing to what's happening today was going on between sort of the woke leftists and the Islamists. Is yep. that right? Yes. So obviously, yeah, this episode might go out uh, a bit later on. And so now that Iran is free, <laughs> just in case, just in case, um, there, there, there is a fascinating thing because the, the, the whole point of the 1979 incident was actually a perfect example to, to be studied, but humans never learn from history. So um, same thing that's happening here. I'm exaggerating, but a proper version of it happened in Iran. So in the 70s, Iran became a liberal secular society, you know, they become prosperous, slowly getting better and better freedoms and all that. Uh, Western, they called it, but it's just, you know, being civilized. The main opposition to the monarchy were the communists funded by the Soviet Union. They were the ones doing the uprising. Uh, they were the activists with guns and all that. So when the Savak and the secret police were going off them, they were not like ordinary people wanting freedom. They already had freedom. It was um, and communists wanted to do treason. But when they were doing it, at the end, when the Shah left, uh, the last king, the uh, the Ayatollah, who was in exile in France, at that point, the evidence is now out because it's been revealed a few years ago. The CIA and France and a bit of MI6 were helping the uh, the Islamists uh, to train them because they realized the Shah is going to go. We're not going to support him anymore. It's too late now. But in order to stop the communists, because it was the 70s, wow. Cold War, let's try and get these guys in. You know, well, yeah, they're just nice uh, religious people, right? Uh, and we could control them because they're idiots. The next day, the Islamists uh, went on the streets saying death to America. The whole plan backfired. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the one thing they didn't want them to <laughs> yeah, be saying. Yeah. So, but they, they went hand in hand when the revolution was happening. It wasn't a revolution because it wasn't, it, 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 there was no like popular uprising. It was a paramilitary coup with guns. But when that was happening, the Islamists and the far left, the communists, were going hand in hand. But the moment the Islamists uh, took power, they also killed the communists. Same thing that Hitler did, obviously, like Hitler and that ideology came from socialism and all that, and you know, say national socialism. But the moment he got power, he killed the communists. <laughs> so that's why the communists called him far right. <laughs> right. Um, so it's, it, the whole thing is insane. And the same thing is happening now. We got the, 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 the champagne socialists and all the spoiled kids from Brighton and Bristol and other places yeah. going there with their avocado coffees on the street saying, from the river to the sea. You do realize, and with the pride flag, if they take over, they're gonna hang you. Yeah, <laughs> gonna have a rooftop party with you. Yeah, it's, it's, fucking hell. <laughs> literally, yeah. they actually would. Yeah, would they actually do that? Yeah, because they keep saying it. it even I've, I've got the footage on my channel where um, every time there's one pride flag, the the, the Islamist side they they take the flag, they rip it apart, they say go away, you're not welcome here. And these people are masochists. These woke liberals. They keep going back. I'm like, what do you, you like to be like harassed? <laughs> do they hate Jews more than they dislike being yeah, harassed? Because they, they associate Jews with power yeah. and, you know, and, and also whiteness. Mm. Um, it's, it's not the Jews' fault because for decades, for centuries, they keep getting sent to exile. So they end up becoming white, <laughs> and they, <laughs> having babies with other white people. Oh. Um, but you know, they, they, are, they have their own country and Israel is strong. So strength mm. equals evil. But Anyone 50 society. Muslim countries. <laughs> yeah. How many Christian countries are there? 30, 40? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I don't know. These people, what what do you think it, it is in the minds of, of, of the woke that makes them want to die? But it, I think the whole ideology is based on being anti rather than being pro. Being anti things is not enough. You have to also be pro something. Um, and they're going around just complaining about things without actually having a productive solution. They don't offer you anything. So, for example, they say... Uh, I don't know, we need net zero because, you know, we have two years to live. But they don't actually have a workable solution to, in, a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. They just say, stop using cars, stop eating meat. To, to what end? Yeah. Uh, they say the same thing about, you know, for example, when it comes to the wokeism, uh, whatever you want to call it, this uh, regressive, illiberal ideology, same, I don't know, all white men are bad, so they're evil. We should cancel them. Then what? Mm. Like straight uh, <clears throat> women, feminists, bad. What then? Gay guys about they're, they're not even promoting, for example, uh, trans people or gay people. They're just attacking you if you are skeptical. So it's, it's interesting. They don't actually... So even when they celebrate, for example, Pride, and Pride used to be just normal. People, like, people were gay just going to get drunk and have fun. That was it. Now it's become politicized and all these political banners and all this. It's all these idiots who have no idea 
about anything about like the gender lobby or the, the trans issues scientifically, medically, or even like in a normal way, they are the ones who are the advocates. They are the ones who are the activists. And I'm like, well, then if I say something, my opinion about, you know, the trans issue, for example, they say you can't talk because you're not one. But you're not one either. <laughs> like the, 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 even the trans community, they have a silent majority. A lot of them don't want to be associated yeah, with his, the the militant ones. Like, hey, I feel like this for whatever reason. Just leave me alone. I'm gonna stay at home, do whatever I want to do. But I don't want to go out there, do this whole like you know, uh, hoopla and uh, like you know, go on the streets and like hang out with pol political signs. Mm -hmm. Like, it's insane. Yeah. They feel like they're speaking on behalf of those people. Yeah. Then when those people have different views, such as Caitlyn Jenner, who's yeah, a yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but that's why I've had it on my channel so many times. I've been uh, they've attempt to cancel me, but I'm uncancelable because I've cancelled myself. Caitlyn on your channel? No, no. Oh, These oh. incidents happen, but every time they try to cancel me, is uh, I realize somebody gets offended on behalf of someone else in a different continent from a different century. It's it's fascinating. Why are you offended? What happened with the slave trade in Nigeria 200 years ago when slave trade was happening everywhere and also they were the ones selling the slaves. <laughs> it's not like that the You've Brits... You've gone into controversial territory. <laughs> that changed very quickly. Escalated quickly. Did, did anyone listen? Anyone? <laughs> Nobody listening expected that. Yeah, very good point about woke stuff. And the thing about the slave, slave trade... Slavery was bad, but... <laughs> but I, don't you even realise how good slavery was? Everyone was us here. That went very... <laughs> Hard work. I'm I've kidding. never seen how quickly, how quickly a, a, an idea that uh, obviously, you know, all ideas deserve uh, introspection and, and, and learning and all of these things. And I'm, I'm intrigued by it, but I was shocked by that. I love that. The, the, 30 seconds ago, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm uncancelable. And then I said that. The thing about the slave, <laughs> um, but, but no, this, yeah. this, uh, this, a similar point might be about the, the, the indigenous Americans, yeah. uh, this, this idea that they were like these pure, almost inhuman. I mean, humans are human, right? Humans do human horrible things always. Yeah. That is history. Every time there's been people they've done awful things yeah. but like suddenly like those people must have been utterly perfect and yeah, they, they were, were angels they must have been killing each other i don't even but know no, but they, the thing, they, they, they treat the native americans as one tribe one collective mm. there were so many different tribes they were killing each other anyway i'm not making any excuses for like you know what happened when the white europeans went there mm. but you're talking and when they talk about the british empire for example you're talking about a time when humans tribes or nations are either empires or wanted to be empires. That was just the norm. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what even the Native Americans, the small tribes, they were doing the same thing on a smaller scale. They were expanding their own empires on a smaller scale against each other. It's just that the white Europeans came with the um, gunpowder more successful. Yeah. And then it's not saying it was a good thing or a bad thing in that thing. It's just that was just the natural part of humanity. Um, Human history. But yeah, I mean, but they're, they're treating him like a, not just angels, but also just one tribe. Mm. That they were all united. They were having a great life. Mm -hmm. And they all got killed. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But they've got different ways of knowing and yeah. knowledge <laughs> and all of these. It's, it's so patronizing and racist yeah. against those people. Yeah. This idea that they, you know, I, I would hate that. I'd hate to think people thought of the Jews, for example, as just like this, which people do. They say, like with the Holocaust, they say, well, why didn't they fight back? It so, sort of dehumanizes yeah. them. And many Jews did fight. Of course they did. And yeah. then they lost. They had, you know, yeah. guns and Well, things. the SS were quite strong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And humans are going to human, you know, brains yeah. are brains and we all act tribally and, and all of these things. Yeah. Man. But that slavery thing was <laughs> just came out of nowhere. <laughs> Bloody hell! But you know, no, I, I I know what you're saying. Um, people, you know, humans are going to do terrible things to humans. Yeah, That's just cool. learn from history and get better instead of just moaning about it. What happened mm. 700 years ago? Mm. No, Wait, how is that going to achieve anything? Yeah. I, I absolutely agree. Um, with what you've told me about the the radical Islam co mm. combo with the left yeah. in, in Iran and all of that, when the BBC says things like Iran is mourning. Uh, the death of of its uh, president. I mean, th does that mean all Iranians? I mean, what Iranians are they talking about? Are mourning? In this? Well, it's fascinating. So, um, according to their own official stats so from the Middle East, um, there there is a so in Iran it's like eighty eight million people now. So let's just say ninety, uh, and uh, only thirty percent are practicing Muslims now. So because the regime is Islamic, the people assume the BBC will assume everyone's basically Muslim. Uh, there's a massive rise of Christianity. There's also a lot of people converting back to Zoroastrianism, the Persian religion. Hmm. But that's not the only issue. It's one of those situations where, like the, the white revolutions there in, in, in Eastern Europe, the, the Eastern Bloc with the Soviet, it got to a point where it's literally the people against the tyrants. It's not really half and half. It's not like here, yeah, half people are Tory, half of them are Labour. It's not like that. Uh, so according to the stats, um, about... 
five percent to, to be generous because it's like three percentage well five percent are supporters and when you look at the number um, the what five percent is firstly they're all because they're all cultists so you're all all members of the irgc and your families and all that so that's it you're mm -hmm. part of the regime basically and lower like a mafia family but five percent is a still a huge number out of nine million so when you get uh, one million, two people, two million people coming out on the street for funeral. Firstly, that's not even all the supporters. You would assume they all should, should come out, right? Yeah. So that's that's the small, like a half of it or whatever. But then the BBC said, "Well, look at this, so busy. That means everybody is on that side." But does that sh show that when the the Islamists come out on the streets in London, that everybody in London mm. is in favor of uh, I don't know, the, the, even not just any Palestinian cause? Are they against Israel, for example? And the, the headlines are stupid. They, they should just say the supporters of the regime. And it, it, don't even call them the way I would call them. You don't have to call them if you're a BBC. You don't have to call them Islamists. You don't have to call them terrorists. Just call them the supporters of the Iranian regime. Yeah, more neutral. That makes sense. Because yeah. like, they would say it, but with Putin, if Putin has a rally, they say Putin supporters. Just say the same <laughs> instead I, of saying the Iranians. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Russians are worried. You know, they wouldn't do it that way, would they? Yeah, it's exactly. So bizarre. It's a double standard. 